what's up this is gonna be my first deck build vid for uh 2014 is on the slivers yes yeah, a three color white red green but I've uh, broken it down multiple times this one I'll make uh, red and green As you can see I just basically run with 11 land you know the basic land but what I end up doing we Right now I got it sorted by cost. I'll run all my terramorphic expenses because just in case you might end up going land dead or land screwed, you know most people like to call it, that helps you out even though it might just be you run two lands. I do add the first strike slivers. Like I said, since I'm running red and green, I skip all the white and just put in the red. So shocks, I run all four my predatory slivers. Now survival of the fittest, I might sometimes I run it depending on the just because if I have a, a handful of big creatures and no smaller creatures, I can. Use this ability to discard a creature card, search a library for a, you know, smaller card that I can cast. Also, I like the benefit of shuffling my library because, like, like I said before, you might be drawing all creatures or just drawing straight lands. That added ability of shuffling, it'll help you out. And rampant growths. Now, I don't add the sliver constructs because... Yeah, you know, three, four, two, two, and the main thing is no abilities. And this deck is basically centered around abilities of your sliver, so I just skip those. Again, since I'm not running any white, just skip through. Now, this one. I'll probably yeah I'll go ahead and put one in and then I'll sometimes I'll run both and then keep it at like this or just take out the one inch and add the extra land and run all the cultivates and skip all the white now I guess what is this by fear Kate this is a good card to have because I'll run across where you know I'm playing against another sliver deck and I have this in hand and they bring out their one with trample I play this card put it on them and then now I got my trample guy out and I don't even have the required land for it but so these are good to have now thorn cast I do put all of them in all my red lifeline I do not put in the deck I suggest you not do it either I mean yes yeah, a good card for when your creatures die they come back on the field but it's a I call it a shared ability because that means everybody even your opponent so if you destroy like a Andrade it's gonna come back out on the field next turn or at the end of the turn so keep these out of your deck well, in my opinion. Coat of Arms. I run it. But it's one of those you don't have to run. Because uh, cause of the ability. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield that shares a creature type with it. And yeah, that's good. It'll pump up your, your creatures. But also, again, it's a shared ability. But I personally run it. Um, Savage Beating. I'll run it. Now as far as wild pair, I don't use it because once you're by the time you have this out, most of your slivers will be like you know, pumped up so, and if you don't have the matching of power and toughness, then this card is useless. And Ground Shaker, 
I use one because why would I need two? It's not like trample, you know, stacks. So, and I have a total of 60 cards, 11 and 11, fairly balanced. So again, you go ground shaker, magnet. Yep, so that's my red green sliver deck build. I'll try to uh, have a quick video of some playthrough just to show you how it works out. And uh, I'll probably hop on some multiplayer so I can give you a let y'all see how it works out. Like I said, it's hit or miss, but sometimes it also depends on who you're playing with, who you're playing against, skill, you know, all that. So. Thanks for checking it out. Hopefully, you know, this might be a good build for you. You might want to try it out.